So I've been scouring across YouTube to see what I was going to watch. But then I stumbled across this channel here. This actually a really cool name, by the way. He created a series on creating a computer on a breadboard. There's a lot of intricate stuff that goes along when a computer does something. There's a lot of things they have to know about in order to create a computer. So that's why I was like very interested. So this guy is using a 6502 processor. He explains in a really good way on how to use it. And at some point he creates like a really intricate computer using the 6502 processor. It's a simple little processor, but it can do a lot of things if you're clever with it. What I discovered is this is a really revolutionary processor back in the early 80s. And this is because it's a cheap processor. It's being used on the Commodore 64. And there's also been used in the consoles like the popular NES and the Atari 2600. Of course, because of the popularity of it, there's a lot of documentation, there's a lot of resources out there in order to help me learn about this processor. So what got me into this processor is that it's simple in nature. In order to cut down on costs, you have to make the processor simpler, so you use less transistors. And because of that, you have a reduced instruction set. All this is all the instructions the CPU can execute. It presents many challenges on basic tasks, right? Even on multiplication, this processor does not have an instruction on multiplication. But honestly, that's the fun part because it challenges you on to thinking in a clever way on how to do some operation or calculation using a simple instruction set. So this got me thinking, well, like, what's the most effective way for me to learn how to use a 6502 processor? I was thinking about Minecraft and how it has redstone. It's basically a play on the real world where we use electrical circuits in order to create uh, machines that do computations. And so that I was thinking, what if we can implement a microcontroller that uses a 6502 processor and put it into Minecraft? So you can write assembly for it and make it do stuff that you want to do in your Minecraft world. So you would have these four pins. Of course, you'll be able to control them using code. You're able to like sense input and send out an output if you want. Just pretend like this is an output right here. So might as well just make a mod that adds in the microcontroller that uses a 6502 processor. It's going to be a more... Uh, kind of intuitive because we kind of know how redstone works what if you can go a step further and code your own solutions into this block and being able to do something with it this is where i got to planning on how the architecture of the microcontroller will be laid out because of course the 6502 on its own won't be able to do much but if you add modules to it that it's able to interact with then you're able to do much more with it so for example, on the Arduino Uno that uses a Mega 328P, and it has this architecture on how everything is laid out. So of course you have the AVR CPU, you, and then you have the RAM, you have the EEPROM, you have the flash memory, which is program memory, and then you have all of these modules on the side that uh, interfaces with the outside world for the CPU. This is something I have to plan out. I soon realized that it's much better to directly create a documentation site. So I use this empty book to compile the markdown files and into a documentation for the microcontroller. And for the GPIO here, of course, you have a section on uh, differentiating uh, analog and digital signals. And also this module uh, supports interrupts, so it can interrupt the processor whenever it receives like uh, an update on the pin. You have the pin values, so that's where it's going to actually store the values for each pin. So so yeah, this all this documentation is being used as a backbone on the coding that I've been doing. So of course, this is going to be a Minecraft mod. It's going to involve coding in Java as Minecraft is written in Java. I found some libraries that are made for emulating a 6502 processor on GitHub. And I found this one. And it's, yeah, of course, it's written in C++. It's fast. It's simple. So therefore I was like, should I write the whole thing in Java and just implement everything in Java? Or should I use some of the code for this mod and implement it in C++? So I, yes, indeed, I will use be, I will be using C++ to emulate the 6502. But not only that, I'm also going to be using the I am GUI library. And this library is a godsend for UI programming for C++ applications because it allows you to implement uh, controls for your program in a very easy and intuitive way using the immediate mode a design paradigm not only that since everything is implemented in c++ you don't have to deal with html or css something like that like what we do for web development because which is great when you're running minecraft you don't want something to eat up your ram just because you needed a simple slider to control with all right that would be silly right 
That's why uh, I chose to go with C++ because I'm um, GUI uses C++ and therefore I can create a little IDE that is going to be necessary for coding the processor in game. And of course, if we're implementing a IDE into Minecraft, into like a UI application, uh, we're going to have to use a text editor. So, and there's already a text editor right here. It allows you to do syntax highlighting. It allows you to show you some errors, uh, markers. So that way I don't have to implement everything from scratch, which would take me a very long time to implement. I currently do not know of an efficient way on how to bridge my C++ code into Java. I know there's a way using Java's GNI interface. I have used that in the past, but it was so long ago, I forgot how to use it. So I can have a refresher on it. But on the meantime, I can be working on the backbone of this microcontroller. So therefore I have something to work with by the time I have to bridge over my C++ code into Java. Speaking of the C++ code, the backbone of this whole operation here, yeah, I've been dedicating uh, the last few weeks implementing a microcontroller backbone into C++, which can later on be imported to Java. But yeah, of course it uses um, GUI right here. This is the UI interface. We have the code node nano C++ file, which implements the actual microcontroller. This microcontroller has a GPIO module, it has a RAM module and a ROM module. So there's only three modules at the moment because like that's the bare minimum for it to do anything useful in the game. But later on we can add in like timers, watch like timers, serial interfaces and flash memory. So you can actually store persistent memory for the microcontroller. But yeah, you have the, all these commands so you can interface with it once it's time to like interface it with the actual game. Let's move on to showcase this application. Start right here. There it is. There it is. This is the mic controller right here. And it has the four redstone wires that you can interact with. We're now in full screen mode and I'm going to showcase what this application allows you to do. So yeah, this is basically the a, a virtual environment for a microcontroller. So I can like test out the code that I'm developing for the microcontroller that's going to be implemented into the actual game. Um, so I'm using I'm GUI, of course, to display these windows. So we have these four windows. We have the main window. Well, the first window, of course, you have your controls over here, which allows you to power and reset. You have your four inputs, which basically uh, controls the signal strength going into the microcontroller as if you're like placing a redstone signal you have your cpu status register which is for debugging purposes here on the third window we have the zero page view which is basically uh displaying the first 256 bytes in ram and this is mainly used for see if like any calculation or operation you do actually valid or not you can store it in the zero page so you can see the actual value here and then we have here the main guts of this program. Uh, yeah, this is your IDE window. Uh, this is where I'd be actually be able to write your assembly code, uh, 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 it's be able to compile and upload it to your virtual microprocessor. And then you have your console window over here to display the output of your assembler. And speaking of your assembler, we're using the same assembler from Ben Eater that's used in his uh, 6502 computer series. Uh, this code I've been working on is basically, uh, it's a rotating signal program. Let me just show you what it does. So you click on upload. There you go. Look at that. That is really cool. And this is actually executed on an actual 6502 processor. And it's using the GPIO module that I created for outputting these redstone signals, which is awesome. All right, so yeah, I'm gonna show you the basics on uh, actually how to program for this microcontroller. Cause this program <laughs> <laughs> looks really complicated to look at the start. So we can just start off from ground zero and then go up from there. So I'm gonna show you like the basics and give you a feel of what it's like to program on this microcontroller. And this is the code, this is like boilerplate code that you're gonna need. This sets the reset vector to head into this function whenever the CPU resets or when it powers on. And we have the loop function, which basically goes back and forth like this, boom, 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 boom. Well, not really, it just stays in the same place and it actually doesn't really do anything. So if I upload this code, uh, the processor would be running. So if you can see here, the cycles is going up. That means that the processor is actually running. It's running at 800 Hertz, as we said before, but it's not really doing anything. So let's make it do something. We can start off by making the North pin, this North pin right here. 
we're gonna make that north pin output a signal so of course we're gonna have to interface with the gpio module uh using those registers from the gpio module we're gonna start by loading this value into the accumulator and i'll explain that in a bit and then we store it inside this address this uh address right here is a register or the gpio module and it triggers whether or not each of these pins are either inputs or outputs so that's actually directly manipulating the gpio dir buffer and yeah that sets the direction of each pin so of course we want the north pin the first pin to be an output and that's why we have this value here as set as one telling that that pin is going to be an output the rest are zeros because that means that's an input we're not going to be really using them so we just need to set one of them and then once after is done we upload it nothing nothing occurs yet that is because we actually have to set now the value of the pin and so we know that the pin can go from 0 to 15 so we're going to load a immediate value of 15 and we're going to store it in address 7000 and this address 7000 that's also the gpio module and that is telling what output value for this pin the first pin should be at and once we upload this there you go we actually get something here sweet and of course if we want to manipulate another pin we can set for example the south pin would be on the third bit and we load 15 store it on this address right here but the address for the south pin is on register 7002 so that sets both the north pin and the south pin to 15. so we upload this right here we can see now that these two pins right here they're on and yeah that's pretty cool that it's done all here in this code right here which is awesome well, I think this is really fun and a really intuitive way of how to learn how to use the 6502. Uh, one last thing I can showcase here in this code. Let's say we want the processor to count up from 0 to 255, which is an 8-bit value. We can use the X register for that. So we can load a 0 into the X register. And here in the loop function, this is where we can use the in X instruction which basically increments that uh, x register by one and we can store x into the zero page memory of zero zero so therefore we can see it on our zero page view right here so we upload that and there you go there it is so it's updating that value in address zero zero and it's just basically copying the value from the x register which is here onto this region of memory and yeah that's good for debugging purposes all right guys so i'd like to ask you guys what you guys think of this program i've been working on this for the past month and honestly uh i mean it's not easy to develop this because it does re require a lot of planning it does require a lot of research and also does require practice on actually coding here uh coding actual assembly for this processor it, but it, it's still really fun and you guys think that this project is gonna be really beneficial for computer science people uh it will help me out it will let me know that yeah there's people interested in this project and i'll be even more psyched to release this mod in the future so if you guys like this video go ahead and leave a like and subscribe comment if you have any questions and yeah well see you guys then